Today we're not going to paint this and we're not going to paint this. I'm going to do a painting incorporating this idea and this idea. Probably in different colours, I'm not sure yet. Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Anyway, so what I have here is yesterday I was doodling around and um, I did this sort of wet in wet shape here in the middle of this piece of paper. And uh, you might like to try this yourself too. I just started with a circle of one shade of green and then I kept adding sort of con continuous so, uh, overlapping kind of semi-circles and things and letting them blend. And then when it was all completely dry, I came in with my white pen, my gel pen, this one here uh, from Signo, and I just did some doodles on it. And that was just a fun way to spend uh, a little while yesterday. Um, I heart heartily recommend that as a sort of, um, you know, a warm up before you start to paint and it might stimulate some ideas or set something turning in your brain. Um, and then I, around the outside of it, I just painted a few leaves that happened by accident. Actually, I think I started with those leaves. I had done a rose. So this is just a sort of messing around thing, trying out different greens. And I was using the Paul Rubens set. No, I wasn't. I, I was using, what was I using? Yeah, no, yes, I was. I was using the Paul Rubens set for that, I think, but it doesn't matter. Um, could have used anything. And I just chose two colours of green. There was just um, uh, olive green and phthalo blue. And I just mixed and matched those and got different colours. So that was that. That's number one. And then just now I did this, which I did with this paint box. And I, it's all about colour, isn't it? And choosing the right colours that go together. And if you limit yourself a bit, you'll find that your paintings will come out more harmoniously which may or may not be what you want. But if, if you want harmony and sort of um, to keep the range of colours fairly narrow, then it's a good idea to have a paint box. A lot of you I know have got a lot of paint boxes with different brands and so on and so forth. And um, I did something a little bit, um, a bit outrageous, I suppose. I'm a bit of an anarchist really at heart. I like to break all the rules. Show me a rule and I'll find a way to break it. Um, so to my neighbour today, that if she shuts her cats indoors and goes away and leaves them a week at a time, I will be breaking her window, and I mean it. Anyway, honestly, I, I kid you not. Anyway, to get back to paint, don't digress, Diane. Don't, do, not, do not digress just because you're an anarchist. It doesn't mean to say you should digress. Um, so I took, uh, I had a whole lot of paints in um, different tins and things. So I decided to put all the blues in one tin and I've got another one similar to this with all the reds in. And the beautiful thing about that is that it will give you an analogous design if you use only these paints. Whereas when you go to something like this, which is a beautiful a gallo box, you've got everything from lemon yellow all the way through to purple in the same box. And there's a tendency to be tempted to put colours together like orange and purple, for example, which don't work because if you put them together, they turn into grey. So you have to keep them apart and that somehow becomes much more difficult um, if you're not experienced. So as a beginner, I think people should encourage, I think us teachers, we teachers, we should encourage people to paint in analogous um, palettes. Just a thought. So anyway, so that's what I did this morning, just to try out the greens uh, with a little touch of the violet, which is here, because that doesn't really belong with the reds. So I put it with the blues and the greens. Are you following me? I hope so. Anyway, so today what I thought I would do, I looked at my circular design here and I thought, well, that's very nice, but <coughs> um, what can I do with that? So I thought, okay, I'll have a look through a few books and see if I can get some ideas. And I've decided I'm going to do something really radical. I'm going to paint a turtle or a tortoise. 
but I'm going to do it like this. So wish me luck. I'm going to start now. Um, I've got a paintbrush here. This one happens to be a Drawwell Maestro. It's a black handled Drawwell brush, which is very nice. Um, some of you will already have bought the Drawwell red ones, which are also absolutely great. They're very inexpensive and they're perfect for what we do. Um, and I've got my white pen and I've got a little mixing palette there. And I've got my paints here. And I'm not going to bother too much about what colour I use. I'm just going to um, start painting. I've drawn this turtle. Hopefully you can see that. Um, I will put the sketch of this on the blog, on the blog, on the website, dianenton.com, if you want, once it's finished. And then I'm, I'm going to do a border of flowers or something like that around the outside edge. Do something. I mean, it's up to you if you do this painting, you'll do it whatever way you want to do. I'm not going to paint it wet in wet. I'm going to just paint it um, and allow the colours to flow as, as they want to. So um, I'm going to try and do this as randomly as possible and I'm going to try to do it mostly in blues and greens and uh, we'll just see what happens. And I'm going to do what I did yesterday with, the, with this, this design here and I'm going to start in the middle because what, I, what I'm planning on doing, hopefully it'll work, is um, once it's dry, I will uh, come in with it, come in with my white pen and um, and uh, um, embell embellish it. So we'll see what happens. So I'm just going to, I'm painting, by the way, on a piece of Arches watercolour, Arche, if you like. And this is just a really good way to, whoa, to see how different the paints are and just to, you know, enjoy putting colour on paper. And you see colours that you don't like, like that one. But, you know, it might work out in the end. You never know. And I'm just picking them up at random. Um, ta -dum, ta -dum, ta -dum. What's that? That's Thalo Blue, I think. I don't know what the names of these colours all are anymore. So mixing greens and blues just for fun. Weather's terrible today, it's blowing a gale out there. I don't think it's quite as bad as it's been in America, but. You can probably hear the rain and the wind in the distance. Yeah, so I'm just carrying on with this. These colours are a mixture of, uh, I've got some Schmincke, I've got some Windsor and Newton. Um, I think there's a couple of Sennelier's or something like that. These are all my traditional old, old fashioned paints and they do tend to dry lighter. Not sure about that big blob of green there. I think I might put some blue over the top of that. They do tend to dry lighter. Um, we leave that light patch in the middle there. I'm going to paint over that green. I don't like that green. It's not that I've got anything against that green particularly, but it didn't look right there, did it? Okay, so there's the body of the turtle. 
or tortoise. And um, then I think probably his body, probably, um, yeah, shall we, shall we do his head in a sort of light green? And again, I'm going to just put the different shades of green next to one another. Greeny, blue, turquoise and so on. We will do pen work over the top of most of this because I think it's a perfect example of something that benefits from having pen work done on top because don't turtles and tortoises have rather scaly feet and legs? I think they do. So anyway, I'm just painting in his legs here. Doesn't matter if it blurs a bit where it joins, that's fine. Blurring is good. And uh, so then this leg at the back here. Give him a little greenish kind of tail. Okay. Right, so that can go over there, and then my other painting, this one, is going to be my inspiration for the leaves. So while that's drying, we'll paint some leaves around the outside edge. And um, let's see, let's uh, go to the greens. And I think for something like this, it's a really, really good idea to exercise a little bit of uh, patience or um, go slower and just change the colour for every, every single leaf. And then you can bring in the centre stem and let it blur. Like that, and we'll be able to do um, uh, what do you call it? Lines on top as well. We'll do some little ones like that. And if you feel they're a bit boring, just drop a little bit, do a bit of wet in wet and just drop a bit more paint into what you've already painted. The um, Archer's paper is, is very good at accepting that. You can do as much of that as you want. It just gives you more vibrancy. And then when we come in with the pen, we can sharpen it up a little bit. Um, I've got the idea for doing something like this from um, the Daisy, uh, what's her name? You know, Being a Wildflower, that book. She's got Turtle in there. And she did it in a completely different way. I borrowed the idea from her, but you know, I mean, a turtle's a turtle. There's no, no, what do you call it? No um, copyright on turtles. <coughs> mm. 
And when I've finished painting these leaves and berries, I will probably put a um, hair dryer on there. If you want more accurate um, lines in your paint, then you probably want to use a um, hot press paper. I'm not going to any effort to um, predict what colour is going to come out of the end of my brush. Just making patterns. Bit of letting wet there, let it blur. And do the same down here. My hand's going numb. I haven't had any chocolate. Whoops, sorry Zen, did I disturb you? I haven't had any chocolate today, so I'm not feeling very verbose, but I'm sure some people will appreciate that. Maybe Tamsin will put some music on this one to fill in the gaps. Okay, so let's just make the eye socket a bit rounder. We're not going to make this, this here turtle particularly accurate. He's going to be, you know, an easygoing bird. That's that, let's give him some toenails. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to dry that with the hairdryer. So we just put a couple of um, <clears throat> little butterflies in, just really simple ones, like little bows. At the top there. And um, yeah, so now this is dry, I think, and um, move that out of the way for a second. Uh, so I need my white pen and we will begin, I think, here and hopefully, hopefully it will work. We 
could use a brush and do this by painting. If you use one of these pens, you need to remember something I don't always remember, which is just to use it as lightly as we possibly can. Just drag it very lightly across the surface. For some reason, they work better that way. And go fairly slowly, I think. It's probably wise. We just go around giving him his shell sections like that and then the next thing would be to, I don't know, we could, well we could embellish his legs, we could just, first of all, I just feel like doing this first. Give him his scales on his legs like that. And this one too. This kind of painting is such a good thing to do with children because it's so good for them to develop their skills with a pen as well as a brush. I think it's wonderful to think that there are kiddies out there who are learning to paint from the videos on YouTube. Isn't that fantastic? Okay, so then we're going to do patterns on there, a bit like what I've got on here. So you can start at the top. And um, I think maybe... flowers. And then we can do circles. We could do spirals, very good for a shell because I think they have a certain sort of spiral pattern, these shells actually, but we don't want to do that on all of them. Some of them will put stars, five pointed stars. <clears throat> and then maybe up here we might have some leaves. Um, and so on. Um, this one probably could be a bit smaller. There we go. Perhaps we'll do dots. You could do as much or as little as you want on here. You don't have to do them all. Let's do some overlapping circles. Here we can have some big spirals, perhaps. 
How's he looking? Um, and you could have some flowers done like that. We could have some dots and spirals. And we could have some zigzags. And on this one, maybe we'll just do something small like some little half flowers like that, like a border. There we are. And then we'll put some scales on his neck. There we are. And now we're going to go to the leaves and put in some veins into the leaves and we'll go around the berries which gives them a bit more shape and like that And we need something on the butterflies. They need also um, some, let's put some golden. Well, that doesn't show up very well, does it? Okay, let's go for black. There we are. Black antennae for the butterflies. Quite like it if you do the vein and you also go round the outline of the leaf. I quite like that. I think that I don't know. It just seems to work for me. And to go round the berries with a nice round circle done freehand. You can put so much personality into something like this. Yours will never be the same as anyone else's. I know there's a lot of people out there that are very fond of tortoises. We used to have one when I was a child. Um, I haven't had one as an adult. But I think, I think they make very good pets. Apparently. There we are. So I think that's enough for that. I think we could add a bit more. You could put in some, well, he could have some scales on his head. Perhaps he needs a few bits of texture up here. And he's got a nice smile. That happened more or less by accident. And he's got a sort of beak, which they have. They look sort of beaky, don't they? So yeah, I think that will do. So there we are, there's a tortoise or a turtle for your pleasure. Have fun painting him and make him yours. So I'll say goodbye for now. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this rather peaceful new year. They live a long time, don't they? So they're a very good inspiration for us to keep going no matter how slowly. <laughs> So I'll let you go slowly and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now, everybody. Bye bye.